Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about morph cameras. Morph cameras are a simple way to blend multiple cameras in your scene. Ultimately, they will put a smile on your face because you'll spend less time fighting with your camera animations and more time creating what you actually want. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. Okay, so today we are talking about camera morph tags inside of Cinema 4D. Now myself, I am not the best camera animator and uh, sometimes I need a little help. Uh, camera animation can be super tricky and it can be tough to get like smooth animations and just really get from A to B to C in a, in a tasteful way. Um, and throughout the years I've, yeah, it's not really my specialty, right? Whereas uh, as a CG artist, we're, we're expected to do a lot of different things, especially in today's world, uh, especially if you're in, uh, the commercial industry, you're expected to do kind of everything. And the reality of it is, is you're not always the best at everything. Um, and myself, I'm not the best at camera animations. So I found that camera morph tags are super helpful and they're something that has improved my camera animations um, and made it really easy and fast for me to get decent results. Um, and that's why I wanted to share it with you all today because I think it's I think it's a valid warranted tool that we should all know about if you don't already know about it. And if you do know about it, maybe take a second look and you know just remember it's there and maybe it can help you um, yeah, in your in your daily uh, in your daily job. Um, so what does it do? So basically, camera morph tags blend between cameras, and it blends them in a fashion that you can get from A to B to C in an, in an, in a clean way. And what what does that mean? So like, so a lot of times when you're when you're animating a camera, you're gonna want to go from point A. We'll just do point A to point B for now. So let's say the client wants to start here. It's like a, a product demo or whatever, and they want to um, come and they want the second part, they want to swing around and they want to kind of come in here and see this logo, right? They want to see their product. Um, so let's go ahead and set that second keyframe. Now, if we go to our top view, we can see what our um, what our actual uh, camera motion is here. So let's see what that looks like here. And you can see what's happening is it's, it's not really giving us desirable results. At least I, I wouldn't call this desirable results. This feels uh, not right to me. It doesn't feel like something I would want to see so naturally probably what you would do next is you would come in here and well let's just let's just set another keyframe let's get to my second most desirable result like maybe like here or something you know like because I, I want to like swing out so let's go ahead and put it like here and let's just see what this looks like because I, I want to like do a nice arc all right so let's go ahead and hit play <laughs> and you can see we're getting we're getting some kind of wonky results. It's just not that great. And of course, you can you can animate this and get it perfectly right. I, I know that you could put it along a spline, but in this scenario, um, I think it'd be easier if we just set our keyframes and then we we create a blend between them, right? So let's figure out what our keyframes are. So I know I like this um, for our second one. Let's just say I mean I'll probably be about right, right? Like somewhere in there. So this would be frame two. And then for frame three, we know we want to be right here at the logo, right? We want to be able to actually like see it. So let's just say that these are our three keyframes. So what we need to do is we need to create three separate cameras to blend between them. So we have camera one, and then let's create two other ones. So we'll call this camera two, and then let's call this camera three. Now for camera one, um, what I'd like to do is I would like to just get rid of um, the last two keyframes. So let's. Let's get rid of these, boy, it is not happy with me today. All right, let's go to the animation mode. All right, so for camera one, let's get rid of these last two keyframes because um, we don't want them. For camera two, we're gonna keep the second keyframe and for camera three, we're gonna keep the third keyframe. So now um, if I come back here to, um, to this mode, actually let's go side by side, sorry. Cool. So let's come back over here to this mode. And if we go, uh, if we click between our cameras, we have camera one, camera two, and camera three. So these are essentially our three poses, right? This is, these are the marks we want to hit. So let's go ahead and select them all. And let's go to create. And then let's go to camera. And let's create a camera morph. And you're going to see what it's going to do is it's going to create a camera morph setup, a new camera, and um, a camera tag. So with inside this camera tag, you'll see it's automatically built in our three cameras, cameras one, two, and three, in that order. Now you can come in here and you can rearrange them however you want, but for now we know that one, two, and three is, is what we want. We, that's the order that we want. Um, 
And then this is uh, should be pretty intuitive for you, but we also have blends. So we go from, from zero to 100. Zero being camera one, 50% being camera two, and then camera three being 100%. So let's switch over to our top view. And we can see that camera one, two, and three. So I know if I'm at zero, zero percent that I'm all, uh, I'm gonna be on camera one. Now let's go to 50%. You can see our blue camera here is kind of coming through. Let's go to 50%. 50% I'm exactly on camera two, right? Um, and then at 100%, I'm gonna be exactly on camera three. Now obviously basic math for this situation, but this is the, <laughs> this is the, 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 the gist of it. Um, so let's set it back to zero and then let's just go to like frame like 54, I don't know, 54 or something. Let's go set it to 100. So it's going to go from zero to 100. All right. And let's just see what this looks like. Let's look, th let's look through the camera and see uh, what happens. Right away, you can see we, we get a we get a we get a somewhat nicer um, animation that's happening. It's not quite as wonky and it's it's blending between them pretty nice. Now I still feel a little bit of a hiccup that's happening here, and they and I think then when they created this, they know that like you know there there is an interpretation that's happening, right? It's not all gonna work perfectly every time because it is somewhat guessing. It's I'm sure it's some sort of algorithm that's happening where it's um it's making this curve that's happening, right? You can see that this you yeah, this curve that's happening. So let's go ahead and let's change our interpretation to linear. And you can see with linear, it's literally just going to be bang, bang. It's going to be really weird, right? And like we can see that this is, it's linear. Um, and then let's change it. Um, so we were on soft one. And then let's look and see what it does when we go soft two. So soft two, you can see it makes it kind of a little nice and rounder. And I don't really know like what mathematically it's doing. It doesn't really matter to me. All I care about is how it looks, right? So let's see if this works any better for us. So I, th I think that works a lot better. It, it feels nicer and it's not always gonna be better every time. Um, you know, sometimes one will work better. Sometimes none of them will work better. That's kind of where you as an artist have to, that's your job, right? Like you gotta figure out the problems. But what this does for us is it gets us 90% of the way of kind of where we wanna be from where we were, which was not very good. Um, now from here, of course, you can come in to your F curves and you can start pulling the curves and smooth them in and whatnot. Um, and again, that's that's not for today's lesson. That's more about you as an artist and as an animator. That's that's the second part, right? Um, but this is this for me is already feeling much better than than where we were before. Um, so from here, you know, you can also do uh, a couple other things to note. Is it also blends between um, like your camera lens, uh, like your focus your focal distance which is pretty awesome so if i come in here and i have this at like 50 or well maybe not maybe we do 36 at the beginning let's do camera 3 to 50. let's do that to 50. and you're going to see if we go to a top view what's going to happen so let's you're going to see that the focal length is going to to go in maybe a top view is not the best example but it's going to come over here and show you this. You can see on your focal length here that it's actually adjusting as you go, which I think is pretty cool and nice. Um, and then past that, uh, what you have is you have a couple options. So you have something that is stabilized and stabilize is nothing more than your up vector. That's like the easiest way for me to put it. Stabilize is your up vector. And if you don't want there to be an up vector, turn stabilize off. Now, if you don't know what an up vector is, it's just like what is up for the camera. So like if I come over here to camera one and I say, um, I don't want there to be keyframes on this. Sorry, hold on one second. Delete. All right, so if I say that I want to start like this and then I go back to my morph camera. And this is another nice example of just how easy you can make these changes, right? So now it's respecting that, right? It's respecting that rotation. But if I come over here to stabilize, you're gonna see it's not gonna respect that rotation anymore. It's always gonna keep it like locked to the up Y axis. So it's not gonna rotate. Um, and past that, what you can do is you can set a custom stabilize object. So like, if you want a custom up vector, so I can say like this cone is my up vector and I can come in here and say like, if this is pointing up, that's how I want you to point. And if not, I want you to follow it. So if I come and I go to this cone and I start to turn it, you'll see that the camera, the camera itself, if you look at this morph cam here, is gonna turn with it, right? It's gonna turn exactly how it does. So if it's pointing up, wherever it's pointing up, that's where it's gonna turn. And that's all, that's all that really does.
Um, and I think that's that's pretty much it. I mean, there's simple morph, and all simple morph is is if you just have two cameras. So if you have two cameras, it just does a simple morph. Um, and past that, yeah, I mean, really, it's just about getting in there and kind of noodling it, you know? Like, if, if this is good for you, great. But if you want to continue that, then you need to start pulling curves a little bit. Um, or if you decide like, hey, I want to I want to change the second camera or, or, or I want to change, you know, the third camera to be a little bit further out. It's so simple. You know, now I, all of a sudden I've assuming I didn't have a keyframe set, um, which I did um, turn this off. So now all of a sudden, if I come to my third camera and I pull out a little bit, you'll see that's going to be reflected in my morph cam. So it's super simple and I think it's so valid and it's something that we all should be using if we're dealing with cameras or at least know that it's there because it's, it really is a great tool and I, I, I hope that you guys uh, will find that also. Um, and past that, that's all I got for today and I thank you all for the support. It's been amazing and I will see you on the next one.